My speech is about uh, Hayek and the French sociologist uh, Raymond Boudon. Boudon is uh, uh, one of the today's most important uh, champions of methodological individualism. I would like to compare Hayek's uh, theory of action with Boudon's one. Boudon uh, criticized Hayek. Uh, like other authors, he stated that Hayek's methodological individualism deals with assumptions which, uh, that are partially wrong. Boudon correctly maintains that methodological individualism is based on two, on two ideas. The first idea is the indeterminist nature of action. This means that actions Action is not determined by social or economic context, as Hollis supposed. Its cause has not to be sought in the context, but inside the individual, in his motivations, in his intentional choice. The second idea, the second pillar of methodological individualism, is the analysis of the unintended effects of human action. Boudin thinks that Hayek is wrong because he wholly concentrated on this sec second pillar. He believes that Hayek neglected or denied it the, the crucial importance of uh, the indeterminism of action as well as that of the intentionality of choice. In particular, Boudin states that Hayek, Hayek did not understand the importance of explaining human, human ideas in terms of methodological individualism. One of the most uh, interesting contributions of Boudin is his sociological anal analysis of human beliefs. His analysis, analysis of the actions that lead to the endorsement or re rejection of a belief. Boudin did not study purely personal beliefs, beliefs, like I believe that red wine is better than white uh, wine. This is purely subjective. Uh, Boudin considers collective beliefs, the beliefs uh, that are largely shared inside a certain society. According to, to Boudin, there are two kinds of collecti collective beliefs. The first kind is represented by positive beliefs, the beliefs that something is true or false. For instance, the idea that hurt is, uh, earth is uh, uh, spheric or that hurt is flat, as our ancest uh, ancestors believed. The second, kind, uh, the second kind is represented by normative beliefs, beliefs which concern ethical points of view. The ideas about what is fair is fair or unfair about was it, uh, was what is right or not, uh, which, as you know, change in the different societies. In a uh, cannibal tribe, is ethically acceptable to, uh, to eat human meat. It's not the same uh, in our society. Uh, Boudin stresses that both these two kinds of beliefs are very often explained by using a holistic approach. Uh, let's consider first positive beliefs. Uh, let's consider namely uh, positive beliefs that are very strange and obviously false and that individuals keep using in spite of empirical refutations of their validity. According to a, a holist anthropologist, 
the fact that a member of a, of a primitive tribe believe, believes, for instance, that rain dance is a use, useful instrument to force rain to come, is determined by the culture he interior, interiorized, by the culture he has absorbed. The cause of this false belief and of uh, this action has to be sought outside the individual, in the cultural context. The meaning of the meaning the action carries out for the individual is not important. The individual is not aware of the fact that he is actually directed by cultural factors. Following the methodological individualist approach, Boudon offers a different explanation of the belief in the efficiency of the rain dance. He assumes that the cause of action is always inside the individual, in his intentions. The cause of rain dance depends on the meaning the primitive person gives to his action. It depends on an evaluation this person holds. His evaluation is perfectly, perfectly rational, even if it looks completely ir irrational from the outside. The action of such a person is not a mis mysterious uh, and irrational phenomenon which can be explained only by saying that there is a cultural determinism. For, for Boudon, the primitive individual, individual's action is rational and perfectly understandable in the light of his background knowledge. This background knowledge is very different from ours. That's why primitive actions seem, seem so strange to us. The primitive person does not master the principles of biology, physics, or meteorology. The best instrument this person has to explain nature is a set of religious theories. So, his rationality is situated, is linked to those theories. Moreover, this individual has good reasons to continue to believe in the utility of the rain dance, in spite of empirical refutations. It's necessary to consider, for instance, that the rain dance is usually practiced in the time of the year when the rain is useful for cultivation. This is the period when rain usually falls. So it seems to the primitive that rain dance actually works. Boudon states that the Th that positive belief beliefs have to be explained thus trying to reconstruct what he, he calls the good reasons individuals have to endorse them. Those good reasons are based on a bounded or subjective rationality, which is linked to a limited and fallible knowledge. So for Boudon, even the actions which are based on the wrong beliefs are rational. Like Mises, Boudin denies the necessity to make a distinction between rational action and irrational action. Let's consider now the second kind of, of collective beliefs. For Boudin, not only the choice of means, but even the choice of aims can often be studied as the product of good reasons. In other words, we can also explain the ethical beliefs in terms of good reasons. When Wudon says ethical beliefs, he does not mean uh, every kind of value or aim. As I said, Wudon considers only 
the moral views which are largely shared inside a specific human group. Those collective beliefs on what is right and what is not right can be explained by methodological individualism. This is an original point because usually methodological individualists uh, don't care much to analyze e ethical views. According to Boudon, this has been a mistake which encouraged the development of a holistic approaches in the sociology and anthropology. Indeed, some holistic scholars admit that methodological individualism is a useful to explain the choice of means, the positive beliefs, but is useless to explain the choice of aims, the normative beliefs. Those holists suppose that we can explain the individual aims only by using a social, a social or cultural determinism. In order to illustrate uh, the necessity of enlarging the field of, of application of methodological individualism, Boudin considers a very interesting historical case, the part played by religion in political and social life in the United in the United States and France. While Americans usually have a positive attitude towards religion, the French don't. Atheism and anti-religious tendency tendencies are very common in France, but not in America. Why is there such a difference between the, these two countries? Holistic so sociologists would explain that stating this fact depends on the fact that Americans are Americans while French are French. Americans have a certain culture and this culture which they interiorize determ determines uh, their actions and their values. values. French have a different culture and they are determined by their different culture. As Boudin states, this kind of explanation is completely unsatisfac un unsatisfactory. Actually, it's not a, an explanation at all. In order to really explain the dif this difference between Americans, Americans and French, it's necessary to reconstruct their different reasons, their different motivations. I don't have time to give you all of uh, Boudin's arguments. Just an example of his individualistic approach. Boudin states that Americans, unlike the French, do not have reasons to limit the part played by religion to the spiritual sphere. This behavior relies on different historical occurrence, occurrences. For instance, in Europe, religion has historical, historically been in competition with politi politics. The church has tried to play a part in politics. On the contrary, American churches, being so num numerous and in competition with each other, have not given in to the temptations of politics. They immersed themselves in the social context, focusing on the public health, social assistance, public edu education, and so on. Neither public authorities, nor intellectuals, nor private citizens have reason to challenge uh, these activities. American churches are part of everyday social life. Citizens do not have any reason to reject them. So Boudon, even uh, so for Boudon, even the cultural differences among nations have to be explained through the meaning they acquire in the minds of individuals by trying to understand the individual, the individual motivations. As I told you, Boudon criticizes Hayek's methodological individualist, indi individualism, stating that it is only concentrated on the part played 
by unintended consequences. According to Boudon, Hayek deni denied the importance of the indeterminism of a human action and the importance of the demotivations of individuals. I think Boudin critici Boudin's criticism of Hayek is unfair. It's ob obviously true that Hayek gave a more importance to the analysis of unintended consequences, but it's false that he denied the indeterminism of human action. To argue that this is false, it's necessary to consider Hayek's psychology. As other critics of uh, Hayek's theory of action, Boudin did, did not care to carefully analyze the content of Hayek's book, The Sensory Order. I think that this book contains Hayek's most important contribution to the theory of action. It has been unf unfairly neglected. Although it is not a treatise of sociology, it deals with issues which are very important for every theory which aims at explaining collective beliefs. The sensory order is a claim for the indeterminism of human action and for the necessity of explaining beliefs in the terms of good reasons. It's a very complex book on psychology. I can't analyze its content in detail. I will only sketch its main point. According to Hayek, the mind doesn't have only logical and con conscious skills. skills. It's not endowed only with abilities of conscious reasoning and deduction. For Hayek, consciousness is the type of an iceberg. The, mind, the mind's conscious skills, the skills of logical deduction, are based on tacit or metaconscious abilities. Those metaconscious abilities build the sensorial world. The sensorial world is not the mirror of the external world. It's our interpretation of the external world. For instance, the color red is not an objective property of the external world. It's the way we interpret certain features of the external world. It's a mental construction. I consider perceptions as interpretations which depend partly on biological evolution and partly on the personal experience of the individual. Perceptions produce the necessary assumptions for intentional choice. They define the basic framework of the process of conscious decision. The metaconscious process which builds perceptions selects a basic set of meanings and possible alternatives for action which is the foundation of rational reasoning. A very important point is that this metaconscious process is not deterministic. It depends on a process of self-organization in a complex system of neuro neuronal networks. It's impossible to forecast the functioning of the mind. It's impossible to conceive it in determinist deterministic terms. Today, many studies on the, process, on the processes of self-organization of mind and on its tacit skills confirm Hayek's insights. What Hayek points out is very important for the explanation of collective beliefs. Hayek's theory of the sensory order is a very interesting defen defense of methodological individualism, uh, of methodological individualist theory of action, namely of the, of the indeterminism of human action. Both methodological Hollis, Hollis, uh, Hollis and Hayek maintain that consciousness is not the only important aspect of human nature. But while Hollis assume the action as determined at an, an unconscious level, Hayek states the contrary. An example of a Hollis approach 
is Marx's theory of false consciousness. This theory is linked to the idea that collective beliefs are unconsciously determined by the economic structure. For Marx, the individual is not aware of the fact that his actions are determined by the economic context. According to Hayek's theory of mind, Marx's approach is completely wrong. For Hayek, the metaconscious dimension that is the basis of knowledge is characterized by processes of self-organization which are not deterministic. Their indeterminism rules out the possibility to use the holistic methodology. It legitimates methodological individualism. It legitimates Boudon's uh, explanations of beliefs. Uh, for Hayek, the cause of action has to be found in the individual. It cannot be sought in outside him. Individual ideas cannot be determined by something which is outside the, the human mind. In the last pages of the sensory order, Hayek explicitly states that action has to be explained in terms of good reasons, in terms of individual motivations. So Boudin's idea that Hayek denies the, indet the indeterminism of, of human action is wrong. Boudin, I, Boudin's individualistic theory of collective beliefs is a natural implication of Hayek's psychology. Boudin's so sociology and Hayek's psychology can be usefully combined in order to argue for an individualistic theory of action. Thank you.